Knowing that I was losing out to certain jobs because of my complexion. When Hollywood stops, a lot stops and, and lives stop. So it was a necessary thing. Only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. Tashina Arnold has stirred the hornet's nest and the grapevine has gone into overdrive. The celebrated black actress has sent a warning to black actresses pining to get featured in a Tyler Perry movie, and it has caused a stir on the internet. What did the legendary actress say? And is there an iota of truth in her assertions? Watch as I dissect Takina's statements and dig into history to ascertain the veracity of her alleged claims. Tashina Arnold is one of the most recognizable faces in black Hollywood. From her days as a child actor to playing Pam in the sitcom Martin, and to portraying Rochelle in the Chris Rock directed series, Everybody Hates Chris, Tashina has paid her dues. The veteran has experienced it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and is in a great position to advise up-and-coming black actresses as to which producer to avoid. This is especially important given the numerous complaints that many black actresses have made about their treatment in Hollywood. So, when celebrities like Tashina seek to guide young black actresses through the complex and daunting Hollywood maze, they better listen and take note. And that is exactly what Tachina did when she warned black actresses to stay away from producers like Tyler Perry. Now this might come as a shock to many, as Tyler Perry is one of the leading Hollywood producers who seems to have the welfare of black actresses at heart. From featuring a predominantly black cast in his plays to portraying issues that bedevil black women, Tyler Perry has positioned himself as the voice of the black community. He has given the black community a major representation in Hollywood and deserves his flowers. Before Tyler burst onto the scene in the early 90s, white TV shows and movies dominated. Black actresses were underpaid and often mistreated, causing dissatisfaction among the community. However, when Tyler eventually emerged as a major producer, it gave everyone hope that they would finally be seen and heard. Thus, it is only appropriate that black actresses are attracted to and would want to work with him given how the other producers treat them. But Tashina Arnold apparently thinks that the grass isn't greener at Tyler Perry's side either. Aside from the meager way that the ace black producer pays his cast and crew, which we would come to later, many critics, including Tashina, believe that Perry's movies feed into the stereotypical black woman. They feel that Perry has done little to project the image and values of the black woman and instead continued the age-old stereotype of a struggling black woman. His critics think that the actor cum producer is milking that stereotype for his selfish gains and thus has failed to develop talents in the industry. A typical Tyler Perry movie features a struggling and angry black woman woman who suffers due to her own actions until a man comes along and lends her a helping hand. He often portrays black women as single, loud, arrogant, vindictive, broken, and mistreated since his first movie, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. In I Can Do Bad All By Myself, the lead character, April, played by Taraji P. Henson, is a selfish alcoholic enduring a physically abusive relationship with a married man. When her two nephews and a grown-up niece are brought to live with her, April rejects them because she sees them as a burden she doesn't want to bear. She struggles with substance abuse after rounds of drinks at the bar, then appears her saving grace, a repairman named Sandino, played by Adam Rodriguez, who April immediately disdains due to his rough outlook. However, she later falls in love with him as Sandino guides her through her darkness into the light. She finally accepts her mistakes, corrects them, and eventually becomes a better person, thanks to Sandino. April is a typical example of a Tyler Perry female lead character who is fraught with poor choices and mistakes that lead lead her down the path of destruction until she's rescued by a male. Though there are such characters in the black community, many people feel that black women are much more diverse and complex. They are not the one-dimensional, angry, hopeless, and male-dependent characters often projected by Perry. Another Tyler Perry movie that unfortunately feeds into the narrative is the 2005 movie Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Here we meet Helen, portrayed by Kimberly Elise, who is enduring a broken relationship with her husband Charles, played by Steve Harris. Paris. This movie shows Helen as a struggling, poor, unemployed wife who goes through the ringer before she gets salvation. Her husband, Charles, continually mistreats her and eventually kicks her out of the house. However, he meets his Waterloo when he gets shot and has to depend on Helen for survival. Meanwhile, Helen falls in love with another man, who just as in the previous example, guides her through her suffering until she sees the light. Charles then changes his ways and tries to get back with Helen, but it's too late as she has already found love in the hands of her saving grace. The same trope 
trope is repeated in the movie Medea Goes to Jail, where the lead character, Candace, is portrayed as the biblical Jezebel in need of help. Once again, Candace Washington Collins, played by Keisha Knight Pulliam, is a struggling addict and an S worker. She finally lands in jail for her crime and meets her knight in shining armor, Assistant District Attorney Joshua Hardaway, a rising star in his profession. As you'll expect, Candace becomes a changed person at the end of the movie, but not without great help and intervention from Joshua Hardaway. Tyler Perry repeats his stereotypical suffering black woman in Good Deeds, where single mother Lindsay struggles to make ends up. Her job as a cleaner at the Deeds Corporation could barely meet her needs and that of her young daughter. The climax of her suffering was when she was kicked out of her apartment and then her savior came in the form of a man to alleviate her suffering. Many fans believe that though Perry might have good intentions, he's going about it the wrong way. They feel that the legendary producer could portray black women in a more positive light where they offer empowerment to others instead of always being the object of help. Tachina believes that portraying black women this way would help change the narrative about the black woman. She believes that portraying a powerful black woman who spreads love, strength, and hope in a hopeless community would go a long way to change the stereotype. But as things stand, Perry appears to be hell-bent on maintaining the poor, struggling, vindictive, and severely flawed black woman. The reason, we can't tell, but many fans suspect that stereotype is paying pretty well. Tyler Perry found success in perpetuating the stereotypical black woman, and perhaps he feels changing the narrative wouldn't be good for his pockets. All the movies and stage plays that he produced came on the back of a struggling black woman, and changing the formula might prove disastrous. For example, the movie I Can Do Bad All By Myself raked in a whopping $51.7 million on a budget of $19 million. Curiously, the movie was heavily panned, with many critics calling it formulaic and predictable. Most review sites gave it a score of 5 out of 10, with some sites scoring it as low as 3 out of 10, but it still made the money. Medea Goes to Jail performed better at the box office by bringing in over $90 million against a budget of $17.5 million. However, technically, the movie performed poorly, with some movie aggregate sites awarding as low as 20%. The same can be said of the 2018 thriller film Acrimony, starring Taraji P. Henson. The movie had an average rating of 3.1 out of 10, with many fans criticizing its close resemblance to the 1987 psychological thriller film Fatal Attraction. According to film critic Ben Kenigsberg, the moral of Acrimony seems to be, leave a bad man, especially one who cheated on you before marriage, and leeches off your financial resources, unless he has poured his life into the dream of inventing a self-recharging battery, in which case the bonds of matrimony are sacrosanct and no sacrifice is too great. He further wrote that the film itself was endorsing the logic that keeps spouses Stockholm syndromed in bad marriages, yet the movie performed well at the box office, bringing in over $46 million against a budget of just over $20 million. So it is easy to see why Perry wouldn't change the stereotypical black woman, even if he had to do it to save the world. Some fans don't blame the 54-year-old filmmaker much because his audience probably likes the stereotype. They throng his premiere in droves and support every single one of his projects despite significant backlash from his critics. Maybe they appreciate the story of a poor, vengeful black woman who is saved by a man to a strong black woman who brings hope to her community. Thus, Perry has no choice but to cater to their tastes and demands. However, one major problem that the perpetuation of the stereotypical black woman presents is the lack of depth for the character. Characters. Most of the time, the characters are one-dimensional and present little acting challenges for the actresses. Thus, the black actresses are unable to grow in their craft. Challenges and difficulties bring the best out of us, and so do challenging movie roles. Actors and actresses get the chance to hone their skills and become better when they pick up challenging characters. In fact, many actors and actresses have won Oscars because of their capacity to take on complex roles and portray them perfectly on screen. However, fans can hardly say the same for Tyler Perry's characters. As we mentioned earlier, a typical Tyler Perry film would feature a poor black woman with a child and a husband or boyfriend who mistreats her. This woman is then filled with rage, pushes people away from her, smokes, makes several mistakes, and then meets a man who changes her. Now, these one-dimensional characters don't present any challenge for the actors to overcome, thus they don't get the chance to develop their talents. Many fans think that this is one of the main reasons why actors and actresses in Perry's films hardly win Oscars, and Tachina appears to echo similar similar sentiments when she warned black actresses about filming with the celebrated black producer. Word on the street suggests that the Everybody Hates Chris star has turned down scripts from Tyler Perry due to the same issue. According to The Whispers, she wants roles that would bring the best out of her and not money to line her pockets. Plus, having suffered being
being pigeonholed in the same character since her portrayal of Pam and Martin, the actress appears to have had enough. She feels that it's time black women got a better representation in Hollywood than the one being perpetuated by the likes of Tyler Perry. She thinks the black woman is a multifaceted individual with unique skills and talents she can contribute to developing the black community. Though pigeonholing black actresses is hurting their image and career, one issue that bedevils them is their general treatment in Hollywood. The movie industry has a history of discriminating against people of color both on and off screen, especially when it comes to pay. It is a common sight to witness accomplished black actors and actresses with multiple awards yet have nothing in their bank accounts. Recently, Taraji P. Henson raised the same issue in an interview with Gail King when she decried the amount she got paid for the movies she starred in. Recounting her experience with pay disparity against black women, the veteran actress revealed that despite the achievements she has chalked in the industry, she doesn't get the pay that she deserved, and this is an actress who has starred in a few Tyler Perry movies. Though she didn't mention any production, many fans surmised that Tyler Perry Studios was a core part of producers that paid peanuts. Speaking in an interview with the SAG-AFTRA Foundation, the actress stated she almost walked out on the set of The Color Purple due to the pay disparity. I almost had to walk away from The Color Purple. Yes, ma'am. If I don't take a stand, how am I making it easy for Fantasia, Barino, and Danielle Brooks and Halle Bailey and Felicia Pearl and Posse? Why am I doing this if it's all just for me? Though the actress didn't disclose the details of the pay she received for The Color Purple, she explained that she's not seen a pay raise since she starred in the 2018 movie Proud Mary. She decried the fact that whenever she felt she'd broken the glass ceiling and deserved more money, she was brought back to the earth and had to renegotiate as if she was just starting out. I'm getting really tired of black women having the same story. It's breaking my heart, she admitted. It's like every time you achieve something really incredible, it's almost like the industry looks at it like a fluke. She confessed that she wished she could take a break from acting and take a vacation to a remote island, but that seems a distant possibility. I'm getting to a point where I just want to be 10 toes down on an island somewhere because of the fight as a black woman. We do it with so much grace and get paid half the price of what we're worth and that becomes difficult, she said. And it's a slap in my face when people go, oh, you work all the time. Well, girl, I have to cause the math ain't mathing. Taraji explained that she's got a whole team to pay and a family to support, making it difficult to live on the meager salary she gets from the producers. So, because you see me working so much, I got to. Big bills come with this S we do, she explained. I don't do this alone. It takes a team and they want to get paid for their work, as they should. Now, pause for a second. This is one of the finest, most popular, and most bankable black actresses who've worked with many producers, including Tyler Perry. And if she's complaining about how much she receives for her work, you can imagine the black actresses who are just starting out. If a legend of the game is being paid stipends that can't afford her a luxurious vacation to a remote island in Bali, then the issue is much worse than we thought. Contrast that with Emily Blunt's $4 million she received for starring in Oppenheimer or Jamie Lee Curtis's $3.5 million for her role in Halloween Ends, and you'll appreciate the fight of Taraji Henson. Thus, if Tashina Arnold's words were anything to go by, then black actresses were better off filming for other producers besides Tyler Perry, and if they refused to work with black producers, they were in danger of being blackballed. Word on the street also suggests that the Medea actor not only lowballs but blackballs black actresses as well. Now, this rumor is easy to believe given the story of Monique Hicks. The comedian and actress has accused Tyler Perry of blackballing her because she refused to do his bidding during the promotion of the movie Precious. Narrating how it all started, the award-winning actress claimed that Oprah and Tyler Perry, after signing on as producers for the movie Precious, approached her to embark on a media tour to promote the movie. Monique, however, refused, citing her family as the reason why she didn't want to do a media tour. Plus, the production wasn't going to cover her dress, makeup, and transportation as she roamed one station after the other to promote the movie. She told Perry that she had already sacrificed enough by accepting a paltry $50,000 to do the movie and had come to the end of the road. For her, spending extra money to promote a movie she knows she won't get back, her cash was a no-no. According to Monique, Tyler Perry understood her position and respected it, and the two of them shook hands only for Perry to brand her as difficult to work with. She explained that Perry called Lee Daniels and Oprah and informed them not to work with her. She found work in Hollywood difficult to come by as word spread that she was a difficult character, thanks to Perry. She even claimed that the Rev Al Sharpton intervened, asking Perry to give her a call, which the producer agreed to, but she never heard from him. She even claimed she had a private phone call with the Medea actor, who apologized for mistreating her. 
However, he has yet to do it publicly. She confessed in an interview with Shannon Sharp that other producers, such as Lee Daniels, took roles that belonged to her and gave them to Oprah because she had the financial pull. So given all these stories, examples, and testimonies from other black actresses about Tyler Perry, Tashina Arnold should feel vindicated. She might not have worked with Perry before, but the numerous complaints from people who worked with him seem to have informed her decision to caution other black actresses. Probably, she aims to protect the next generation of black actresses from the alleged ills of Tyler Perry. Hopefully, the actresses would pay attention to her words and advise themselves accordingly. Which brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching.